Hey everyone, and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know, we're all about staying informed and proactive when it comes to HIV, and today we're diving into something that could really change the game, the search for a universal HIV vaccine. It's a fascinating area of research, especially considering there isn't a single universal vaccine for any virus out there right now. Right, that's what makes this so groundbreaking. Yeah. We've got Dr. Amelia Escalano, a Pew Biomedical Scholar on our radar today. Her work is getting a lot of attention and I'm really curious to unpack it with you. I think our listeners will find this particularly relevant. Dr. Escalano is tackling one of the biggest hurdles in HIV vaccine development. The sheer number of variants HIV is constantly changing, which makes it incredibly difficult for our immune systems to keep up. So that's where the idea of a universal vaccine comes in. Okay. Instead of targeting just one strain, it would have to be effective against a whole range of them, kind of like a master key that unlocks every door. Precisely. And to make it even more challenging, no one has ever successfully developed a universal vaccine for any virus before. Okay, so the stakes are high. What's Dr. Escalano's approach? What makes her research stand out? Well, she's developed a technique called sequential immunization. Imagine training for a marathon. You wouldn't just run 26 miles on day one. Oh, definitely not. You'd build up to it gradually, working different muscle groups and increasing your endurance over time. So you're saying she's essentially training the immune system in stages. Exactly. Each shot in the sequence exposes the body to slightly different viral antigens essentially teaching the immune system to recognize and fight off a broader spectrum of HIV variants. That makes sense. But wouldn't it be a logistical nightmare to get everyone vaccinated multiple times? And what about those of us who are already on effective drug therapies like lenacapavir? Do we even need a vaccine? Those are all valid questions. While current drug therapies are doing an incredible job of managing HIV, a vaccine offers some unique advantages. Think about cost effectiveness and accessibility, especially in parts of the world where healthcare resources are limited. A vaccine could be a game changer for global public health and potentially provide long lasting protection, maybe even lifelong immunity without needing to constantly refill prescriptions. Exactly. And while a truly universal HIV vaccine is the ultimate goal, Dr. Escalano has pointed out that we might see regionally specific vaccines sooner regionally specific. Can you explain that a bit uh, more? Sure. Think about it like this. Different parts of the world have different predominant HIV strains, right? So instead of trying to create one vaccine that covers every single variation globally, you could tailor the lessons in the sequential immunization to target the specific strains that are most common in a particular region. Ah, that's smart. Like a custom blend of protection designed for different parts of the world. Speaking of tailoring vaccines, I know some listeners might have concerns about safety especially with all the misinformation out there. Does Dr. Escalano address that at all? She does. She emphasizes that getting vaccinated against HIV does not mean you're being infected with the virus. This is a common misconception, and it's important to understand that these vaccines only use a tiny, harmless piece of the virus called an antigen to trigger the immune response. So it's more like showing the immune system a wanted poster of the virus. Yeah. So it knows what to look out for but without the actual danger of being exposed to the full-blown virus. That's a great way to put it. It's all about training the immune system to be prepared, not about actually giving someone HIV. And this is a principle that applies to all vaccines, not just those for HIV. Right, it's all about teaching the immune system how to fight back without actually putting it in harm's way. Exactly. And what's really fascinating is that Dr. Escalano's team has developed a way to actually track how these lessons are being learned. Oh, wow. How do they sure. do that? They've come up with a way to label and monitor specific immune cells called B cells, which are responsible for producing antibodies. It's like putting a GPS tracker on a delivery truck. They can see exactly where these cells go in the body and how long they persist after each stage of the sequential immunization. That's incredible. So they can actually observe the immune system learning and adapting in real time. Yeah. That must generate a ton of data. It does, and it's giving them an unprecedented level of insight into how the immune system responds to this type of vaccination strategy. This all sounds really promising. Yeah. But we're just scratching the surface here. When we come back, let's delve deeper into the specifics of Dr. Escalano's research and explore what this could mean for the future of HIV prevention, and maybe even for other diseases as well. Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. Before we dig deeper into Dr. Escalano's research, let's rewind for a second and talk about why universal vaccines are so hard to develop in the first place. Okay, it's a good point. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of this new research, but I think it's important to understand the context. Exactly. Think about it this way. Our immune system is incredibly complex. When we get infected with a virus, our bodies create antibodies to fight it off. 
but those antibodies are usually very specific to that particular strain of the virus. So if the virus changes, like HIV is known to do, those antibodies might not be as effective. Exactly. That's why traditional vaccines, which typically target just one strain, often become less effective over time. And that's the challenge Dr. Escalano is trying to overcome with this sequential immunization approach. Right, by training the immune system to recognize a wider range of HIV variants. Yeah. And we were just talking about her amazing B-cell tracking technology before the break. It sounds like science fiction. It's pretty remarkable. Remember, D-cells are the cells that produce antibodies. What Dr. Escalano's team has done is figure out a way to label these cells and then literally watch them move through the body in real time. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. So it's not just about seeing whether the body's producing antibodies, but actually understanding understanding how those antibodies are being created and where they go. Precisely. They can see how the B cells respond to each stage of the sequential immunization, which lessons are most effective at stimulating the production of broad-acting antibodies. Hold on, broad-acting antibodies. You got to break that down for me. Of course. So remember how we talked about HIV having all these different variants? Well, a broad-acting antibody is one that can neutralize multiple strains of the virus, not just one specific type. That's what makes them so valuable in the fight against HIV. So it's like having an all-purpose cleaner instead of one that only works on a specific type of stain. That's a great analogy. And with this B-cell tracking technology, Dr. Escalano can actually see which parts of the sequential immunization are best at triggering the production of these broad-acting antibodies. Wow, that's incredible. But I have to ask, is this something that could only be used for HIV research? Or could this technology be applied to other diseases as well? That's where it gets really exciting. This B-cell tracking technology has the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the immune system as a whole. Really? Give me an example. Let's take cancer, for example. Cancer cells are tricky because they can evolve and evade the immune system much like HIV does. That makes sense. So could this B-cell tracking technology be used to develop better cancer treatments? Potentially, yes. Imagine being able to track how the immune system responds to different types of immunotherapy, seeing which approaches are most effective at stimulating the production of cancer-fighting immune cells. It could help us design more personalized and effective cancer treatments. Wow, the implications are mind-blowing. We're talking about potentially transforming how we approach a whole range of diseases, not just HIV. Exactly, and this is what makes Dr. Escalano's research so groundbreaking. It's not just about finding a solution for HIV. It's about developing tools and knowledge that could have far-reaching implications for human health. It's a reminder that scientific progress often happens in unexpected ways. You start by trying to solve one problem and end up opening doors to a whole new world of possibilities. Precisely. And speaking of possibilities, we were talking earlier about the potential for regionally specific HIV vaccines. Right. The idea of tailoring the vaccine to the most common HIV strains in a particular region. Exactly. While a truly universal vaccine that works everywhere is still the ultimate goal, Dr. Estelano believes that regionally specific vaccines could be a more achievable step in the near future. I see. But wouldn't that create a logistical nightmare? How do you make sure the right vaccine gets to the right region? And what about travelers who move between different areas? Those are valid concerns, and they would definitely need to be addressed. It would require a lot of coordination and international collaboration. But think about the potential benefits. Okay, I'm listening. Imagine being able to deploy a vaccine that's specifically designed to combat the HIV strains that are most prevalent in a particular area. It could significantly reduce the spread of the virus and save countless lives. That's true. It would be a huge step forward in the fight against HIV. But I know some listeners might still be hesitant about vaccines in general. Earlier, we talked about the misconception that HIV vaccination could lead to infection. Is there anything else Dr. Escalano says to address those concerns? She stresses that vaccines are one of the most effective public health interventions in history. They've eradicated smallpox, nearly eliminated polio, and saved millions of lives from diseases like measles, mumps, and rubella. It's easy to forget how much vaccines have already accomplished. Mm -hmm. But I think it's understandable that people are still cautious especially with all the misinformation circulating online. Absolutely. That's why it's so important to rely on credible sources of information like scientific research and medical experts. And when it comes to HIV vaccines specifically, I think it's crucial to remember that the vaccines being developed do not contain the live HIV virus. Right. We talked about that earlier. It's just a tiny, harmless piece of the virus that triggers the immune response. Exactly. And as Dr. Escalano points out, vaccination is a much safer way to train your immune system to fight HIV than actually getting infected with the virus. That's a good point. It's like learning self-defense in a controlled environment versus being thrown into a real-life fight 
without any preparation. Exactly. Vaccination gives your body the tools it needs to defend itself without the risk of actual harm. This has been a truly eye-opening conversation. Dr. Escolano's research is giving us a glimpse into the future of HIV prevention, and it's incredibly exciting. But before we wrap up, I want to take a moment to acknowledge our listeners who are living with HIV. I know this type of research can sometimes feel bittersweet. I agree. While a vaccine would be an incredible breakthrough, it's important to remember that people living with HIV today have access to highly effective treatments that allow them to live long and healthy lives. That's right. And we're committed to providing accurate and up-to-date information about HIV treatment and prevention options for all of our listeners. Absolutely. Whether or not a vaccine becomes available, knowledge is power. The more we understand about HIV, the better equipped we are to protect ourselves and our communities. Well said. Now, when we come back in part three, let's shift gears a bit and talk about the bigger picture. Dr. Escalano's vision for the future of vaccine development is truly inspiring, and I think it will leave our listeners feeling hopeful about the possibilities. Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. We've been exploring this fascinating world of universal vaccines, focusing on the groundbreaking research of Dr. Amelia Escalano. Yeah, it's been a deep dive into cutting edge science, exploring her sequential immunization technique, the remarkable B cell tracking technology, and even the potential for regionally specific vaccines. And before we, uh, we were talking about the broader implications of this research, not just for HIV, but for other diseases as well, it seems like Dr. Escalano's work could really change the landscape of medicine. Absolutely. Her vision extends far beyond just developing a vaccine for HIV. Um, she sees this research as a blueprint for tackling future pandemics and creating a world where we're better prepared for whatever comes next. That's a powerful vision. I think a lot of us are feeling a bit wary after the past few years with COVID-19. The idea of being caught off guard by another pandemic is pretty unsettling. Yeah, I understand that sentiment. And that's precisely why Dr. Escalano's work is so important. She's advocating for a proactive approach, one where we're not constantly playing catch up, but are actively developing tools and strategies to prevent future outbreaks. So it's about shifting from a reactive mindset to a proactive one. That makes a lot of sense. But how does her research actually translate into that kind of preparedness? Well, think about it this way, her sequential immunization technique, the one that involves training the immune system in stages, could potentially be adapted for other viruses. So instead of creating a vaccine for just one specific strain, we could design vaccines that are effective against a whole range of variants, even ones that haven't emerged yet. Exactly. It's like creating a more adaptable and versatile immune response, one that's better equipped to handle the unpredictable nature of viruses. Wow, that's pretty mind-blowing. It's like future-proofing our immune systems. But is that even realistic? I mean, viruses are constantly evolving, right? How can you stay ahead of something that's always changing? That's the beauty of scientific research. Mm. It's about constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Dr. Escalano's B cell tracking technology, for example, is giving us a whole new level of understanding about how the immune system works. All right. We talked about how they can actually track these immune cells in real time, seeing how they respond to different vaccines. Exactly. Yeah. And the more we understand about these complex processes, the better equipped we are to manipulate them and design more effective vaccines. It's like having a roadmap of the immune system, showing us the pathways to triggering the most powerful responses. Precisely. And this knowledge can be applied not just to viruses, but to other diseases as well, like cancer. We talked earlier about how Dr. Escalano's research could help us develop better cancer treatments by boosting the immune system's ability to fight off tumor cells. This all sounds incredibly promising, but I imagine it will take a long time to translate this research into real-world solutions. Scientific progress is usually a slow and steady process. Right. It's true that scientific breakthroughs rarely happen overnight, but Dr. Escalano's work is already making waves in the scientific community. Her research has been published in prestigious journals, and she's received numerous awards and grants to continue her work. So she's definitely someone to watch in the world of science. Her research is giving us a lot of hope for the future. But I want to come back to something we touched on earlier, the potential impact of a universal HIV vaccine. Imagine for a moment that such a vaccine was available today. What would that world look like? It's a powerful question. I think the most immediate impact would be a dramatic reduction in new HIV infections. We could potentially see a future where HIV transmission is incredibly rare, if not completely eradicated. That would be incredible. It would mean a world where people don't have to live with the fear of contracting HIV. A world where stigma is diminished and resources can be redirected towards other pressing health concerns. 
Exactly. It would be a monumental shift, not just for individuals, but for entire communities and societies. It's a future worth fighting for. And while we're not there yet, Dr. Escalano's research is giving us a glimpse of what's possible. It's a reminder that science has the power to transform our world and create a brighter future for generations to come. Well said. I think this has been an incredibly insightful deep dive into the world of universal vaccines. We've explored complex scientific concepts, considered the potential impact on public health, and even allowed ourselves to imagine a future where HIV is no longer the threat it is today. Yeah, it's been a journey of discovery and hope. And we want to thank all of our listeners for joining us on this journey. We know that staying informed about HIV is crucial, and we encourage you to continue exploring this topic and learning more about the latest advancements in HIV research. You can find more information on our website, HIVRNatusGuide.com. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about HIV, the better equipped we are to protect ourselves and our communities. That's right. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay well.